Happy Fourth of July. Well, one day early, but we are celebrating it this morning in our service for the celebration not only of the fourth day of Pentecost, but of the Fourth of July. It's appropriate for us and a liturgical year. And I want to make sure that the folks at home, you realize that the bulletin for today is the bulletin that was sent to you and is available to you online with the link to this service. That it's a special bulletin for this service and is not the one found in today's prayer book. So we'll be following this bulletin in its entirety. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Oh God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Lord God Almighty, in whose name the founders of this country won liberty for themselves and for us, and lit the torch of freedom for nations then unborn, grant that we may, and all the people of this land may, have grace to maintain our liberties in righteousness and peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading today is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10. The Lord your God is a God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who is not partial and takes no bribe, who executes justice for the orphan and the widow, and who loves the strangers, providing them food and clothing. You also shall love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God, him alone shall you worship. To him you shall hold fast, and by his name you shall swear. He is your praise, he is your God, who has done for you these great and awesome things that your own eyes have seen. This is the word of the Lord. Let us read in unison Psalm 145. I will exalt you, O God, my King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There is no end to his greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your power. I will ponder the glorious splendor of your majesty and all your marvelous works. They shall speak of the might of your wondrous acts, and I will tell you of your greatness. They shall publish the remembrance of your goodness. They shall sing of your righteous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone and his compassion is over all his works. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power, that the peoples may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. The Lord is faithful in all his words and merciful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open and satisfy the needs of every living creature. 
The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He hears their cry and helps them. The Lord preserves all those who love him, but he destroys all the wicked. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. The second reading today is from Hebrews. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful, who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born. As many as the stars of heaven, as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith, without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who, are, who speak in this way make it clear they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to the disciples, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun to shine on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Holy Lord God, bless America and bless us. Amen. I am free to admit it, I love the 4th of July. Uh, I, can, uh, I think I'm, I'm of an age now where I can say, I grew up in a simpler time. <laughs> really, most of us, uh, really, most of us did, actually. You know, the internet hasn't been around that long. Um, if, you, if you guys have not seen, uh, if I haven't sent you or you haven't seen this absolutely wonderful comedy routine of a gentleman in his later years that's a stand-up routine about what it used to be like, and you want a good laugh, catch me after the service so I can send it to you because it just, I, it was it's fantastic. It's about another day where phones hung on the wall, right? They didn't follow you around wherever you went and you get news everywhere and you're afflicted by everything. It's about a simpler time when you went to eat dinner and you actually sat down with your family and ate dinner. It's about a different time when, when you thought about patriotism and life and, and, oh, Andy, Andy was my hero. Andy of Mayberry, right? Okay. So in my house, we made a big deal about the 4th of July. It was important. My dad was a veteran of World War II, as his friends were, and his brother was. And uh, the 4th of July came along, and it was simple, and it was pure. We had fireworks in the driveway and in the street, maybe. And on the good years, we could all pile in the station wagon with that fake wood along the side and head down into the heart of Washington, D.C. and watch the fireworks on the mall right there. You know, uh, framing the Washington Monument. And if we went early enough, we could go to maybe the Lincoln Memorial before we went to the... And in my later years, <laughs> my dad bought a Jeep. 1973 CJ5 was called the Great American Freedom Machine. There weren't that many made. And it was champagne white with a red, white, and blue stripe that waved down the side. And we would get out, you ready? cassette players, and we'd make sure we had pockets full of batteries, <laughs> and we would head downtown in the Jeep with the top down, and we would play all the patriotic music as we drove around through the city streets and wave at everybody, and they'd wave back, and we had our little flags until we got to the mall, and then we would park. We would park at the mall when you could park at the mall. Not only could you park there, but there were actually spaces to park at the mall because people were actually in their own communities. They were, if they lived in Silver Spring, they were in Silver Spring celebrating the 4th of July. They didn't all pile into the cars necessarily and go downtown so that there were cars everywhere. And we would leave the Jeep with our stuff in it and we would get on the mall and put down a blanket and watch the 4th of July. Well, because of the purity of this experience in my young life, I, I began to grow up as a devotee, I can say that with some confidence, a devotee of, of the evolution of patriotism and patriotic belief and fervor, the origin of patriotism and the outliving of patriotism in America. And while many think it's a very simple thing, it really is not. And I think we're living out the complicated mess today 
the lack, the lack of understanding of American patriotism. You know, I, I am confident in saying that, that the founding fathers, almost all of them, there's only a few exceptions in there, the representatives to the Continental Congress were Christians, and they based the foundation of the country on Christian morals and ethics and principles. And those morals and ethics and principles found their way into the Declaration of Independence and the Orders of Confederation that formed and directed the colonies and then into the Constitution later on, much later on, that formed the United States or helped to inform the United States. Uh, there are, if you've been here for my 4th of July sermons before, I, I've spent uh, many years reading from the pulpit, believe it or not, I would go over there and spend time reading from the pulpit, another thing I don't usually do, but I was reading the quotes of all of our founding fathers, usually 13, 14, 15, 16 quotes from every single member of the Continental Congress bar, I think it's three, that were writing to their constituency or to each other about the need and the reliance upon God in Christ and the faith of the Christian belief to guide and direct this growing nation yet to be. Not the least of which was Patrick Henry. And I have got a present for you guys. Maybe I didn't bring it up here. Uh-oh, I didn't bring it up here. I've got a present for you when you leave. It's a page like this. It's in the back. It's got this on it, which I'm going to read in a minute. But it also has a quote from Patrick Henry, who says flat out, everybody has, this is after the Revolutionary War, after the dust had settled, and he's saying to, to the world, everybody has to understand that without the Christian faith and understanding, there is no United States. That everything that has propelled us to this moment has been faith. Well, that's wonderful. That's fantastic. But how it grieves me and how it hurts me, and I mean that truthfully, how it, it, it should hurt everybody, because I am deep in the blogosphere, the internetosphere, going online and reading those who are, and these three people that I know personally over the years, one I've met and the other two I know through the blogosphere, have tens of thousands of followers. And they are Christians, ardent Christians, and they, they know about this, this foundation of Christian patriotism in the United States, and they are devoted to it, and they raise it high, and they hold it high, and they hammer it hard into the world about all the things about America based on this truth. And their agenda of truth and their personal need for truth to follow their own opinion. And so as this world has gone forward, I have had some altercation uh, interactions with them. And it just so happened that one of these interactions that I had with them was around the topic of immigration. I think we could all agree that the topic of immigration has been really high on the hit parade for a long time. And one of them started this cascade that got me into the conversation personally with all three of them off the blog, because they all are inner blog. <laughs> and each one of all three of them, as a private conversation, I witnessed to them that, I, in fact, I just said, you should stop. You should stop talking about this, because you need to do more research. And this first one flat out told me, he said, Pastor, I know you are a priest, but you must not be a very good one because you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, that was the, probably the nicest thing the three said to me. I won't repeat the others. Well, what I did and all I had to do was, believe it or not, just go to the scripture. By the way, I love the way Marion turned the page. Did you see her turn the Bible this morning? It was like, I almost had a little flutter, like, it's going, it's going, it's going to be on the floor. But it's, what an image of the weight, the weight and the volume of scripture, and she's pulling it over. I went to scripture, and I just read, what do you know, the same gospel that we have for this morning. You have heard it said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I said to you, 
love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And as soon as I put that out there, I wrote it, I quoted it. The guy came back and he said, I understand what you're doing. You have one of those Bibles where people write what they think and stick it in there. That's one of those fake Bibles. So I sent him the citation and I said, I, in fact, then went online. I, I put down like eight different online Bibles, the links to all of them. I just, I mean, I beat this horse, man, and said, please look this up, but don't stop there. Just go get your Bible and look it up. You trust your own Bible unless someone's ripped out the page, but you should be able to see pretty easily. Read this. After two or three days of talking with them on and off that led up to this point, I came back to them and said, oh, by the way, what did you think of that scripture? I kid you not. Not one of them ever responded to me. But what they did do was go right back to what they were saying as if I hadn't said anything at all. Or rather, Jesus hadn't said anything at all. Bloggists with agendas. Politicians holding Bibles up with agendas. News people spouting off with agendas. People on the street downtown yelling with their agenda who do not know what they are talking about. People claiming to have an inside road to understanding of our patriotic creation as a nation based on Christian principles who don't know Christian scripture from a hole in the wall. And having tens of thousands of people listening to what they have to say and regurgitating it to each other as if it is gospel. Mm. It's the purity of my, my uh, upbringing on the 4th of July, I think, that grieves me in this. I was actually thinking about doing this sermon before, and I thought, I can't do that. I can't. I can't. What would people think? Because everything is taken now based on the agenda, right? Like my blogosphere folks, if you hear, oftentimes people hear something they don't like, they just excuse it as fake news, as wrong news, as bad news. And they will gravitate toward whatever news that they hear, the thing that they hear that agrees with what they think already and what they believe already, and they won't accept anything outside of that. But I say to you, Jesus said. So what happened? What happened? You know, if we are, ba if we are a Christian nation, then when we, remember when you were kids and you used to say the Pledge of Allegiance? I love the Pledge of Allegiance. I used to love to get up in my class. I was the first one to stand up. I was ready. And there was that prayer, you did a prayer afterward. You could actually say it out loud like a prayer. I know all the words to prayer. What happened? If we are a Christian nation, shouldn't we be saying, I pledge allegiance to Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, and the United States of America? If our founding fathers were all Christians and we were based on Christian principles and Christian values and Christian everything, how come it's not so overtly in our face from everything? Our, 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 our American flag should have a cross on it instead of stars, right? Or at least a cross and stars. What happened? Well, I know what happened. All of our founding fathers lost their faith. They got done. They won the Civil War. The, sorry, the Revolutionary War. They yeah, we were burned out by it. took so long and it was so hard. They just like said, ah, I'm done. It was a useful tool to get them reelected. Wait a minute, that's now. Shoot. Oh, no, maybe that wasn't it. Maybe they didn't have any faith to start with. Maybe they just pretended that they were Christians and said the right thing in order to get stuff passed. Oh, no, wait, that's right now, too. Maybe they were really, really, really good Christians. Maybe that's why Virginia was the first state to publish or to put a statute in for the free following of religious belief, the protection, naming Muslims and Jews and other faiths within the, within the Oracles of Federation for Virginia before our Virginia Constitution was published. 
Maybe that's why all the states followed suit. Maybe that's why it's in the, dec- the Constitution, but it is not in the Constitution about being a Christian. Because our founding fathers and mothers were good, good Christians. How's that? Because while they came together and formed a nation based on Christian principles and morals and ethics, they realized that following Jesus Christ and looking to provide a place for those which is safe and open for them to believe, they were doing exactly what Jesus told them to do. Love your neighbor as yourself. Don't just love the ones who love you. Love the ones who hate you. Love everybody. Love like I love. Love like the Father's loves. You know this thing, right? It's so it's just a wild statement. He says, "But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those." So you, so it's conditional. So you may be children of your Father in heaven. Love those who hate you, so you may be God's children. Because Jesus over and over says, "I am the one." Man, if I am the one, then my Father is the one. And you have to do what I do, and you have to be what I am, and you have to follow my Father, and you follow my Father, you follow him. You don't get to pick and choose. You don't get to say, I love you, but this person, boy, I can't stand that guy. I'm just not going to do it. You can't do that. We can't do it. It's not in here. That's the blog people that do that. Oh, I'm sorry. It's really not exactly true, is it? You may have noticed when you looked at your bulletin that in the, in the sections on the side next to like Matthew, there's a bracketed scripture from Luke. And in Hebrews, it's a bracketed scripture from Galatians. That's because those are the scriptures prescribed for the fourth Sunday in Pentecost. The ones we read today are actually the scriptures in the lectionary prescribed for Independence Day, 4th of July. So you know this one in Galatians that's there? You don't have to move. I'll be right back, guys. In Galatians, Paul says, brothers, if someone is caught in a sin, and you who are spiritual should restore him gently, but watch yourself or you also may be tempted and fall. Carry each other's burdens in this way and you'll fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks that he is something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Each one should test his own actions. And he goes on to say, if you live by the, the sword, right? But he says, if you live by the world, you reap what you sow. And if you don't follow Christ, you're going to follow yourself. There's nobody else in between. We think there is, but there's not. If I don't follow Jesus Christ and and hear what Christ has to say and do what Christ says, then I follow my own opinion. I follow my ideas. And when I decide, Jenny and I are talking about this so much in the last five years, she hates it. (laughs) I want a catamaran. I want to go sailing around when I retire and do this stuff. But if I decide that a catamaran is better than a monohull, that's a boat with one, right? If I say that, and that's just the way that it is, and I don't listen to anybody or anything, this is just the world according to Bill. So Paul says, if you don't follow Jesus Christ, you follow yourself. You can say you follow somebody else or something else or someone else, but you're just following what you want to follow. And you'll make it up as you go along. You'll fill in those little cracks and crannies with the things that make you happy and make you feel good. There's nothing in between, not for a person of faith, not for somebody who has a pledge of allegiance to Jesus Christ. So we're not immune to this. The church is not immune to this. The church is a part of this. And we are instructed by Paul over and over again, in fact, by Jesus over and over again, to do the self-inventory of who we are so that we might rise above it or we might move away from it. And where are we moving away to? Back to Jesus Christ, back to the cross, back to our Lord and Savior. It's not the bloggists, it's not the politicians, it's not these other people that are the evangelists for Jesus Christ. It is the church. And who is the church? Well, I'm not talking about the building. I'm talking about you, the people. People of faith are the church. We are called because our agenda is the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Our agenda is a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Our agenda is inviting the Holy Spirit into us that we might let the Holy Spirit reign outside of us that we might be a witness to and in the world. And this is what our forefathers were saying in the colonies and a new nation born of 13 colonies to 13 states. They were good Christians and they trusted. They said, "We we can form a nation on these principles and they're good principles no matter what religion you are, but we're going to hold these truths to be self evident. And we are going to live this way and move forward. And we are going to help and protect and invite and evangelize to those other people who are in need. And you know what? The whole world saw it and understood. Okay, so there's some 
icky points in there between our relationships with the British and the French, you know, got kind, of, kind of dicey there after the, after the Revolutionary War. But that's just adolescence, that's just growing up, right? We've all seen Hamilton, it's all that. By the time the 1800s had rolled around and a little bit later, middle 1800s, late 1800s, the world knew this. The world had faith in us. They knew who we are. There was a gift that was given. It was called the New Colossus. I love that. Remember those claymation movies uh, about Ulysses with uh, Kurt Douglas fighting the big clay lizard thing? This is the New Colossus. This is a historic term. 1883. What's the New Colossus? Anybody? Historians? Oh, say it really loud. Statue of Liberty is the New Colossus. What does it have at the base of it? That brass plaque. Everybody know that brass plaque? You got it memorized, right? Well, that's one of my gift to you is going to be this paper when you get outside. It's got it on it. But I'm going to read it to you right now. This is, uh, this is a gift of France, the new Colossus, to us. And it was to signal or signify their understanding and thank us and hold high to the entire world one of the basic principles of our life as a nation. Basic principles based on Jesus Christ, on the gospel, on the principles and, and the moral and ethical values in God. So you know a small portion of it, that huddle masses part? Okay. Not like the brazen giant Greek fame with conquering limbs astride from land to land. Here at our sea-washed sunset gate shall stand a mighty woman with a torch whose flame is imprisoned lightning and her name, mother of exiles. From her beacon hand glows worldwide welcome. Her mild eyes command the air abridged harbor that twin cities frame. She says, keep ancient lands, your storied pomp, cries she with silent lips. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. The wretched refuse of your teeming shore, send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Ah. Oh. What arguments are we having about immigration? Hasn't anybody in Washington gone and read this plaque at the base of the Statue of Liberty? Haven't they gone back to the, to the four forefathers in the colonies before the states were formed? Haven't they looked at the personal writings of George Washington and the others to understand that we are more than just a nation created and prosperous? that we are a nation that was based on some principles and truths that, that, that were a, bore a witness to something greater than ourselves? Certainly, the world understood it, and the French certainly did. And there is a lady, what was her name? The mother of exile, standing in New York Harbor, still facing out at the world, welcoming everybody quietly in Christ's name. I was talking to somebody the other day who was a real devotee of George Washington, does everything George Washington. Never heard this. Ready? This was George Washington's address to governors of the states in, 18, in 1783. I now make it my earnest prayer. This is an address to the governors. I now make it my earnest prayer that God would have you in the state over which you preside in his holy protection that he would incline the hearts of the citizens to cultivate a spirit of subordination and obedience to government, to entertain a brotherly affection and love for one another and for their fellow citizens of the United States at large, and particularly for their brethren who have served in the field. And finally, that he would most graciously be pleased to dispose us all to do justice and love mercy and to mean ourselves with charity, humility, and pacific temper of mind 
which were the characteristics of the divine author of our blessed faith. And without a humble imitation of whose example in these things, we can never hope to be a happy nation. Who thinks we're a happy nation right now? We don't have to be, and we're not, a Christian nation. This is not a Christian nation. This is a nation based on Christian principles and values. We are a nation that was designed to welcome people of all faiths, of all beliefs in, and in all needs in. And from that place, there was a chance for what? Evangelism. That we could help people who were lost in their faith or lost with no faith to find true faith. And for those who were in their faith and were secure, we would find a place for them to be secure, to not be hunted, to not be killed, to not be hungry, to not be broken. A chance to be made whole here, because where they're coming from, they were broken and not allowed to be whole. The paper I give you is going to have a little explanation of the golden door, what that is. I love one of the explanations of that is the pearl of great price. The golden door is finding that thing that is so much more important and of such great value that you sell everything you own and go after it. These people left everything they owned, everything they know, and got in a container on the back of a truck in the hopes of something more. Our faith as a nation, our understanding of who we are, our patriotism is founded on reaching out and welcoming in. The author of Hebrews talks about this just briefly when he says, you know, Abraham and all his descendants all the way up to the time of Christ, they got the promise, but they never received it. They were promised the coming of God and they never got it, but they never lost faith. They never gave up. They stayed the course all the way to the end of their lives, life after life, after life, after life, after life, after life, waiting because they believed God would, would do what God said. And they would get to the, someday, my great, great, who knows when, how long from now, will receive the promise. And they finally did that one. And you know who's got it today? We do. The promise was for us. The promise is in us. We are living the promise of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and the outliving of that promise through the Holy Spirit into the world. The church, not the blogosphere, not the politicians, not the news people, not everybody who wants to proclaim this stuff out of their own agenda, not them. Don't believe that. Believe this giant heavy book. The agenda of this book is to give us the words of God and nothing else. All of those who had faith Confess their faith in a new homeland. And God is not ashamed to be our God. Lastly, I want to say in this, uh, this letter um, about the church, or this, this, um, this original letter here where God sent out, oh, no, no, I'm missing it again. It is the, it is the letter. I know, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Wait a minute. Oh, it's the gospel. How can I forget the gospel? It's the gospel of Luke for today. This is where Jesus sent out the 70 to the towns and said, go talk about who? Me. Go and tell them all about me. Tell them about my love. Tell them about my sacrifice. Tell them about my, my hopes and my dreams in the name of God the Father. Go tell them. And if they, if they let you in, then live there for as long as they'll let you in and they'll talk and eat whatever they give you. If, if, they, if it's their custom to give you raw eggs, then eat the raw eggs. Don't, don't cause an offense. Just do what they do. Don't try to change them. Try to serve them. Give them the good news. But then he goes on, he says, but if they won't, he says, but whenever you enter a town and they don't welcome you, he says, get out into the streets and say, you can imagine these guys walking down the center of the street. I think of an old Western town, you know, walking down the streets out of town. He says, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off and protest against you. Yet know this. The kingdom of God has come near. You know what Jesus doesn't say there? 
Round them up and deport them. Arrest them, throw them in jail. Malign them in the press until nobody will buy anything from them when they, when they go broke and live in the street. Doesn't say that. Doesn't say hurt them. Doesn't say destroy them. Doesn't say anything. He says, your position as my representative, my evangelist is to go and tell them about me. My gift to them, my gift to them is you talking about me. And if they won't listen, move on. I'll send somebody else. And if I don't send somebody else, I'll take care of it. Who's the eldest kid in a multi-kid family? Okay, so you guys have heard this before. I'm going to be bold. You've heard this before at some time in your family life when you were growing up. You had just got finished. You got finished? That, that's terrible English. You had just finished. <laughs> you had just finished disciplining, di disciplining your younger sibling. And your mom or dad came around the corner and said, what are you doing? Don't do that. I will handle Susie. I will handle Tommy. I will do this. I am the mother. I am the father. You can worry about yourself. I will worry about that. That's right out of the mouth of God. Jesus said, God says, vengeance is mine and mine alone. I am the disciplinary one. I'm the one that does it. You don't do this. I do this. You just say what I say, but you don't enforce anything. That's my job. Aslan, I say this over and over. You love the Narnia, right? Aslan is talking to Lucy. Lucy's in Narnia. She's worried about her brother Edmund. He's lost. He's with the wicked queen. And Lucy comes to Aslan and she says to him, Aslan, what about, what about Edmund? What about Edmund? And Aslan, who's Jesus, looks at Lucy and says, Lucy, Lucy. That's Edmund's story. Let me deal with Edmund. You need to deal with what's in front of you. I'm only with you for a little while. You should be paying attention to me and let me worry about them. C.S. Lewis, right out of Scripture. I love the 4th of July. I love ruminating and reminiscing about our patriotic development over time and about the opportunity and chances we have as a nation to be something more than the agenda of my comfort, the agenda of our fear, the agenda of our, oh, insert here. We are the people of faith. We are the evangelists of God. Our agenda is based right there. We are the gifts of God to the other. And man, that gift has gone strong for so long. Huddled masses and those in need. Would it be that we could reclaim our legacy as a nation founded on Christian principles and live out our mission as the people of God proclaiming the gifts of America to all people. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, bless us that we may bless America. Amen. Please stand. The Litany for Independence Day is found on page six in your bulletin. As we remember the birth of our nation and the gifts of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, let us gather our thanks and prayers to God, the giver of all good gifts. For God, we pray in thanksgiving for the faith of our forebearers, for their dependence on you, and for their trust in your word. We thank you, Lord. For your Holy Spirit, inspiring them to seek a place where your light would shine as the greatest good. We thank you, Lord. For the men and women who braved the long journey by sea to come to this new world. 
for the tribes and the nations who inhabited this land for generations upon generations. We thank you, Lord. For patriots who dreamed of and fought for a free nation. We thank you, Lord. For the men and women who laid the foundations of our democracy and who pledged liberty and justice for all. We thank you, Lord. For those who built this country brick by brick, road by road, and town by town. We thank you, Lord. For the brave soldiers who have fought for our country, for all who have paid for our freedom by their service, and for those who paid by their sacrifice. We thank you, Lord. For innovators and artists, poets and teachers, farmers and factory workers, for all who labor and provide for the common good. We thank you, Lord. For our land with its peaks and valleys, its coasts and deserts, fields and meadows. We thank you, Lord. For our own community, for those who have come before us in this place, and for our neighbors near and far. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we pray for the United States, that we may always be a nation which defends and promotes liberty and freedom, truth and justice. We pray for you, Lord that we might always be a nation where we are all free to worship and to pray. We pray Lord. That we might always be a nation where all the people of the world find you and can be found by you. We pray Lord. That we might be a beacon of freedom to all those who live under the shadow of terror and hopelessness. We pray. That those who are elected to govern and lead would be guided by you and be ever aware of the trust that has been given them. We that we will be a people who repent from our sins and who always return to you and to your grace. We pray to you, Lord, Father of all nations and ages. We recall a day when our country claimed its place among the family of nations. For what has been achieved, we give you thanks. For the work that still remains, we ask your help. And as you have called us from many peoples to be one nation, grant that under your providence, our country may share your blessings with all peoples of the earth. We pray you, sovereign Lord God, bless America as we pray this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Please be seated. Welcome again to you on this glorious fourth Sunday of Pentecost, the Sunday of celebration of Independence Day. I want to give you one more. One more thing to look up when you go home. I couldn't, uh, it wasn't in my sermon, but I didn't, have, didn't put it on a paper yet. The, the ending address, the last address, the fair, put it in Google, the farewell address of George Washington, it's very lengthy, uh, that he wrote to the States is, is famous, I would say notorious in some circles. And if you look through it, you'll find this big section right in the middle. It's about a page where he outlines the greatest threat to American democracy. Guess what it is? An adherence to party over nation. An adherence to party over nation. He says, if we fall into the trap, and he's looking at England, right? If we fall into the trap of not hearing opposing viewpoints and opposing ideas and truths that are beyond us because we have an allegiance to a party, which is my agenda, it will destroy democracy. That's the center of his farewell address. So go home, take a good read. If you have any respect for George Washington at all, your friends do. I love it when I give it to people that uh, <laughs> they don't believe this, and then they, but they want to say George Washington is the greatest thing since white toast, right? Um, I give it to them and say, yeah, read, pay attention to this middle section right here. So go pick that up and read it. He was prophetic, I believe, in the 21st century and what we have seen happen to our country in the last four or eight years, an allegiance that does not hear. It's the deaf, 
screaming at the death. Sorry, that was a downer. Okay, so huh, welcome to you. It's great to be with you, you folks at home. It's great to be with you. There are a whole bunch of announcements in here. I won't belabor them. I will just give you the advertisement to say you need to read them. They change, they're different. There are time stamps on these and they come up and they go away. I will make one note for you that, uh, that I made last week and I'm, I'm thinking that I can actually say it honestly this week. I said it last week with all good intentions, but I blew it. And that was, we were starting the uh, Bible study on Thursday night to the book of Revelation. That did not happen last Thursday night and we have pushed it to this Thursday night. So if you were going to come last week and you went and nothing was there and you can't understand why, all me, it's all my fault. I did it, I goofed. So please uh, give it another shot. Come on Thursday night. The link is in Creator Calling. And if not, you can call the church office and get it. We are beginning the Bible study on the book of Revelation this Thursday night. Also Wednesday night, of course, we're continuing our, our, uh, our film study on The Chosen. And even though you have been with us, you are welcome to join. It is easily one of the best film studies we've done. And there's so much in there uh, for reflection and for growth for us personally. I, I encourage you to do that. All right, other announcements. Yes, Marianne. Marianne, did, did you get that, Will? Was that on? No. Marianne was saying that the first Sunday fellowship for the ladies is going to be at her house tonight. It's potluck. You say bring something, but not necessary. Yes, bring something, but not necessary. Just bring yourself. Uh, if you don't know how to get there, give a call to somebody who does, and we'll play phone, play phone along the line until somebody gets you, tells you where, where to go for Marianne. Uh, you can call somebody here right now after the service and talk to Marianne. So hope to see you all there. Other announcements? Yes, proof. Uh, for any guys that are going, I'm up for night. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. So for the men, so the, for the men to to match the ladies' night out, right? Is that where? You're six. Oh, six. Six o'clock, right? Six six. Six thirty. We're just gonna go sit in the parking lot for a half hour, you know. Um, <laughs> so for 6.30 for the men, anybody, anybody out there who want to, uh, we're going to meet up at Don Pedro's in Mechanicsville and the guys are going to get together and have dinner. So if you can come, come and join us 6.30 Don Pedro's and we'll all be together doing the guy thing. Other announcements? Martha. Thank you for everybody who came to the concert on Tuesday night. That was really well attended. If you maybe missed it or you know somebody who would really enjoy it, we're doing the same program tonight at Chester Presbyterian at 7. I know that's a high for, for here, but I wanted to say thank you on behalf of the group for allowing us to rehearse here. Um, that's a space where, you know, sometimes the rehearsals are challenging because people will be having sort of difficult conversations, but then the music starts and we're all playing the same tune. So that's, uh, I really enjoyed that. Thank you. It was a great concert. If you didn't, if you didn't have a chance to go to it, you missed a great concert. Fourth of July, I, I told Don, Don was up there and I was up there and I, my cheeks hurt. And he said the same thing. He's like, my cheeks are hurting because you can't, you can't help but smile when a brass band is playing. You can't help it. So we're like an hour and a half of just smiling at, at the music. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing to have them uh, have the, the consort here practicing and playing for us. Just a real joy. So we look forward to the next time. If you can't make it to Peters, Petersburg, right? Yes. Chester. Can't make it there this time. We'll look forward to the next concert here and give thanks to God that they, the concert is here practicing, calls, calls this home. We can help them in that way. It's a great thing. Other announcements? I, uh, I have a, the announcement. This came in late last night uh, from the diocese. Uh, the Right Reverend Peter James Lee, the Bishop of Virginia, he is our bishop uh, now, one solid bishop back before Bishop Johnston, when we have elected our we have a, a bishop elect now, um, but B Bishop Lee died yesterday afternoon um, at his house peacefully from what I've heard, but I don't really know what that means. You know, when people say that, you don't know what that means. Um, not a whole lot of detail 
Uh, there's no service planned at this point. Of course, it's too early, but we will have a, a service update and I will let everybody know. We'll send out an email from the church office so you can call or you can go online to the, uh, the website for the diocese and get some details. Uh, Bishop Lee was a great guy. He was the diocesan bishop when I was ordained. I was ordained by Bishop Matthews, which was a suffragan bishop at the time. Kind of a weird thing to happen, uh, but it was good. And I, I used to spend, I used to go down to Mayo House uh, every month for an hour or two uh, for the first two years or three years of my, um, of my time as a priest, which freaked everybody out because uh, they'd ask me, our clergy asked me and say, how are you allowed to do this? You know, you, I, I, you, it's hard to get a meeting with Bishop Lee. He's a busy guy and he doesn't mean, and you're in there for an hour. I'll never tell. He was just a, a special guy, a great guy. When he retired here, uh, he left and went to the Diocese of California, which is San Francisco. He did not stop. He served, I think, in seven other places, uh, interim as interim bishop and, and interim this, interim that, all the way up until, I believe, last year or two years ago. So I will have more details about that, but please, if you want the, the, uh, the fine-tuning, go to the Diocesan website. You can read about him. Uh, just give thanks for his life and his, his ministry in the diocese, and we'll have more forthcoming. Anything else? Birthdays. Oh. Close by. I'm going to stay on this side. No reason to make a crossover. Oh, oh my goodness. Now you have to cross over. I'm, I'm just, I have to be on this side now. It's that comfort thing. Oh, everybody's so nervous. Fan out a little bit. Come on, straighten out here. We're okay. No, nobody's biting. Everybody's all right. So if you're still not fanning out. You got to face this way. Go up there along that or along the other. There you go. I, I know I'm brutal. I'm brutal. All right, tell everybody who you are. What's your birthday? I'm Marion Wright. Yes. My birthday was July 1st, and I am now 86. All right, very good. <laughs> All right. Lily Pacosta, June 27th, she turned 60. Outstanding. Lily, it is so good to see you again. The Zagoskases were with us for such a long time, like 50 years. Yeah. And it was wonderful. They moved away. They had to go away, but they're back visiting, I'm guessing. So it is a delight to see you. Good, wonderful to have you guys back with us for a little while. And Lily, how old are you now? 19 now, is that right? 23 what was i missed it what is it again 15 what a wonderful age to be and it's a what a joy that you have given to us that you've come back to visit and we can do this so let's let's turn around let's, uh, if you feel you can kneel we'll kneel down if not if you want to stand you can stand is that okay sure all right gracious and loving lord god we do give you thanks and praise for the gift of life for your love in creation for the for showering upon us the gifts and wonder of all that you are, that, uh, that you have provided for us such beauty and such wonder that we may see your handiwork in the world around us. We, we give you thanks and ask your Holy Spirit to bless, continue to bless Marion and Ronnie for their, their life, for their, their love, for their devotion to you. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to give them wisdom, to guide them in heart and mind and spirit, to direct their actions and their thoughts and their reminiscences and, and their... Mm, they're everything. They might rely upon you, especially in times of difficulty where hard decisions are made or choices that are hard to choose between. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to, to guide and direct them deeper in their faith and understanding of, of your love and your purpose and your instruction for their life, to continue to lift them and make them strong as witnesses of the church of our Lord Jesus Christ and empower them to lead others to a better understanding of your love and your companionship and your perfect nature and love along the way. And Lord, we, we pray especially this morning for Lily. We ask you, Holy Spirit, in thanksgiving for her presence here this day. We ask you to fill her with your presence, to, to assure her of your love, that in times that are wonderful and times that are, that are frightening or when she is alone or lonely, that she would find your companionship to be that, that confidence and that comfort that would take her to the next moment. We ask you to give her wisdom as she encounters the excitement and the anxieties of growing up in this world. We ask you to fill her with, 
with a dependence, a comfort of dependence on you that in times that are hard, she would find your guidance and your direction to be satisfying and, and to protect her. We ask you to, to, to place her feet firmly on a path of ministry and light and life in your church to, to raise her up as a minister, an evangelist, a guide for others, a witness to those who are seeking after you that through her companionship and through her love and through her gentleness, they would find your gentleness and your companionship to overshadow them. Holy Trinity, we ask your blessing upon them. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Yay. Thank you for staying. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Oh. Anniversaries. Oh, <laughs> almost left. I ain't gonna... All right. Now, I tell everybody who you are. When's your anniversary? Michael, my name is Ariola. This past Wednesday, the 29th of June, marked 37 years of Outstanding. Yay. All right. Let us pray. Gracious God, for the gift of life, for the gift of companionship, you have created us in companionship, create us, created us in dependency upon one another. We thank you this morning for Ronnie and Mike's dependency, for, for your call to partnership, to love and fidelity that you have placed in their hearts and minds and spirits through the 37 years of their time together. We ask you to continue to open their hearts and minds and spirits to your presence and through your mediation to open to them a new understanding of each other each and every day. Help them to find that new part, that new thing, which is glorious and wonderful in your name. We ask you to fill them with wisdom as they order their common life and that of their family, to help them to find compassion and love and mercy and grace for each other when times are difficult, and to fill them with an excitement and joy and of miracle and wonder for each other when times are good. Help them to always include you in their celebrations and seek after you in their need. We ask you to, to lift them in their place of witness and ministry in the church and witness and ministry to others. And Lord, in, in our time together, our companionship, we ask you through their witness of love and devotion to each other that we would redouble our devotion to you and seek out after your presence in the relationships of our lives that we might find that companionship and fidelity redoubled in your presence and your companionship along the way. Holy Trinity, we ask your blessing upon them, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, today and forevermore. Amen. Let your light so shine before all that they may see of your good works and glorify our Father who is in heaven.
Service continues as it is printed in your bulletin. We are receiving the Eucharist through intinction only today. If you would like to receive the wine through intinction, that's wonderful. If you would not, then just take the, take the, uh, the wafer yourself and the chalice will pass you by. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Almighty God, creator of the universe, ruler of all nations, judge of all flesh, you have placed us, your people, in this land, made rich with rivers, forests, mountains, and creatures, great and small. Here you set before us, the founders and pioneers of this nation, an opportunity beyond measure to build a realm of justice, peace, and freedom. Here you continue to call us, your people, freed from the law and baptized into Christ Jesus to be a witness of your reign in the world. For such a place, such a vision, and such a calling, we give you thanks, praying we may ever join afresh the dreams you set before us. And so with your people in every land on earth and in the company of all in heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Above all, we give you thanks for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who sends us into the world to declare the good news of your kingdom to every creature. Justice to all peoples, good news to the poor, release for the prisoners, sight for the blind, and freedom for the oppressed. On the night before he was arrested and sentenced to death by the authorities of his own nation, he took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. When supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And so we remember again, as we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, 
Christ will come again. We pour ourselves out before you in praise and thanksgiving, a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine. Make Christ known to us in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of this cup. Renew our fellowship in him, that we may be for the world his body. Pour us out as witnesses to his love and his presence in this great nation. And gather us at the great banquet in the fullness of your new creation, where justice flows like rivers, righteousness like ever-flowing streams, where none shall hunger or thirst, neither shall they learn war anymore. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. Amen. If you don't make that, you can all sit down. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of 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 our Lord Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Now the Father bless you and keep you, and the Son walk with you and protect you, and the Holy Spirit fill your heart. Amen. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 
Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus, Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. Thank you. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have fed us with life through the sacrifice of your Son. May the love we share in this Eucharist flow in rich blessing throughout our land. And by your grace, may we as a nation place our trust in you and seek to do your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day, and remain with you always. Amen.
Hallelujah. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.